my type, my size Namba na mwe na gimorishas Weza la tambo la mili kentaki So tila gimiwe na my kuchas Au stufu sabi sama nashe Au wazi kumushi ya kbanda gaja Imani wunzi wano kujeni mezo yami Pena wena mshambi jola nonga Na imani nonga niga mga niga mga ni Maru ya zubi kumi na ngala ngali Mpilu kupendu le ya mbali Sibile skofi na bobo gaba gali Hi guys, welcome to my fabulous world. It's another day, another opportunity to connect. And of course, this is uh, Youth Month and I'm connecting with young people who inspire me, who I find interacting with them, instructive. And today, I want to welcome uh, Kopano, who we are talking to. And you may ask, why Kopano? Well, Kopano is very interesting. I think the first thing that drew me to Kopano is the fact that um, he could speak uh, Greek, he studied Greek, or he could speak Greek and Hebrew. I thought, wow, what kind of person is that? But of course, he's a law academic. And before I tell you a little more about Gopan and ask him questions, let me remind you to subscribe, click subscribe, click notification so that when a new episode drops, you can get a notification. And then, of course, comment. I try as much as possible to respond to your comments and then most importantly, tell your neighbors, your cousins, your friends, and everyone, even your pastor, about the, this podcast. Ask them to subscribe because we want to reach 100,000 by the end of this year. Help us reach that target. Are you subscribed, Kopana? Uh, I, I will be. You will be? I, I'm about to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed. Why do I feel hurt um, that you are not subscribed? You know, the life we live, it's so, it's so chock a blocked mm. I probably told you that I will. Yeah. But you expected that I will end up yeah. about I'm about to in it. principle. Okay. All right. Let me, let me tell you about Kopano. Kopano is a distinguished law academic who identifies as a Marxist-Leninist and also believes in God. These things don't look like they could go together, but this is Kopano and they go together. So Kopano, thank you for joining us. And I want us to begin by discussing your unique, your unique perspective as a Marxist Leninist who believes in a higher power. How do you reconcile your Marxist Leninist? Your Marxist Leninist believes and your belief in God. Can they even coexist? Oh, mm. um, thank you for that question. Here's the thing the reason why people find it, find when, when someone says they are Marxist, maybe mm. Marxist Leninist is just a long tongue twister. Yeah. But when someone says they are Marxist, people think, oh, religion, opium, opium of the masses. Yeah. So if you, if you identify as Marxist, then you, you would never identify with religion mm. or because you perceive religion as just a, a system of controlling people. Mm. Has this, this perceived contradiction when someone says, no, I'm a Marxist Leninist. But I believe in a higher power, because um, in the in the praxis of be, in the practice of believing that there's a higher power, it means that you believe that above what transcends ordinary reality, ordinary practices of life, that there's an overarching higher being that overlooks and has a bit of control of, over aspects of how we experience our life. Mm. So that's 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 my understanding of, of that's why that's how I believe in God. Mm. But then. As a Marxist Leninist, because what Marxist Leninism is, is a it's a way of thinking mm. that there is there's something called dialectic materialism, mm -hmm. or in simpler terms, dialectic and investigating of materialism. So the the, the actual felt material yeah. living conditions of people. Mm -hmm. So a way of life that looks in a, with a with a microscope as to how people live their lives mm. so when 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 you live your life or when you have this outlook of life that is analytical mm. also influenced by the idea that there's a higher being yeah you kind of have a bit of purpose in which you approach things in life so that's how i find my balance but that's an intriguing viewpoint because i mean one could ask also why is that higher being god or are you just calling it a god but it's something else. 
Is this the right person to ask? When you say God, what do you mean? Thank you for that. Because that higher being can be anything. Because the fact that the term God, it's there. When you look at its history, mm. it's pagan. Mm. A lot of people that believe in the Lord would never say I believe in God because the title God is seen as a pagan term. Mm. Um, personally, I, I would always like to say I believe in the Lord or I believe I, I believe in a higher being okay. because you, by Lord is authority. So okay. you believe that there's an authority that is greater than, than human, human experience. Mm. So to say, and the safeguard with using, without you not using the term God, mm. is that by using God is exclusive because God is, is usually attached to a certain religious grouping. Christians use the term God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And other religious groupings don't. But all, what, what, the common thread among all religious groupings is that there is the Lord mm. and there is a Lord. So it's, that's the higher power, whatever it is. However, however, however you feel the term best expresses your understanding of the higher being. Mm-hmm. And, and could you elaborate on how you perceive the relationship between your belief in God and the principles of Marxism Leninism in your academic work as a law academic? All right. The, like I said, materialism is basically your felt experience mm. and looking at life with a microscope. And as a law academic, you, you, what a practical example mm. is that apartheid was legal. I was watch, I was watching an interview with, 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 uh, JJ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> JJ. Uh, I, I don't know why it's funny, but yeah. Uh, no, I was just sharing my throat. <laughs> yeah, I was just sharing my throat. Okay. Uh, <laughs> before I JJ you, yeah, let's before, go. Before, yeah. <laughs> I was watching an interview and, um, the term, um, Legal laws of apartheid, blah blah blah. blah. Uh-huh. So the interview was between JJ and, and advocate Sina Council um, with Kaka. Okay. And that perhaps it was a slip of the tongue mm. because the laws that that were being enforced and practiced during apartheid, they were not illegal. They were legal, yes. Yes, in apartheid South Africa. Yeah. So in fact until nineteen ninety four. So 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 there is there is um Focusing only on legality mm-hmm. is how the law is. How the law should be mm-hmm. is is legality that considers morality. Mm-hmm. That's why in, in, in South Africa or, or the, when 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 we practice or the practice of, 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 of South African law to our jurisprudence, when we look at wrongfulness, we, we, we consider um, legal or policy consideration that that this this. This is, 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 is wrong, not just because um, it's you've broken a statute or whatever, mm-hmm. but because w- would it be justified to, f- to hold you liable for, for what you have done? So we then consider legal and policy consideration. So, mm-hmm. so that, that is where, where I find a balance between looking at society analytically and saying that just because something is legal doesn't mean it's correct. Mm-hmm. It must be a, mo- a moral compass mm-hmm. that you apply when you apply legality, because I was speaking to 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 uh, I, I was happy to see you at the social justice work yesterday. Yeah, on Youth Day. Yeah, um, doing something for social justice, which is it, it, it shows you where your telos is. Yeah, and I was happy to see you there. Um, I, I I engaged with with one of the participants at the work. He said to me, "Why are you studying law? Mm. Law is defined. Law is is law is outdated. Law is." Uh, <laughs> Why do you call yourself legal academic? Yeah. And um, I said to her that the, the, someone who, who engages with law quite often, it's very difficult, especially w- with an uh, analytic uh, worldview, mm. it's very difficult to ignore the, the semblances or the package that, that, that this law carries as it is being practiced. Mm-hmm. Like in, in, in anything, when you look at art, when you look at certain kinds of music, it always carries the way in which it was for. Yeah. Uh, Hip hop, you can always mm-hmm. hear, et cetera, et cetera. Just, just this one example. So with law, a lot of things that, that promote uh, positivism or promote a way of thinking that says, if it's legal, it is correct. Mm. It is because when, it, especially in our context in South Africa, when laws are formulated, they were, they were formulated to, to oppress certain people, to, to benefit certain people, but most importantly, so that your actions are legal. Mm-hmm. When it's legal, it's justified. Mm. And so 
what what makes law always relevant is that right now we continue to to promote positivism we continue to promote this this view of making things legal mm. because that's that's our baggage mm. that's how we created the system mm. but if you don't learn to 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 have have an analytical lens to say even if it's something is right our legal might not be right yes but but it's because what's I mean, it's, I guess it's the difference between legality, morality, True. ethics. And, and morality and ethics are a little bit dwarfly because your ethics don't have to be mine. Your morals don't have to be mine. So legality brings us to the same page, I guess. Yep. And that's why it's important to have legal laws that define what's legal and what's not. Because on that, in that case, um, uh, we are all looking at the thing the same way. Whether we think the law should be there or not, but that's what it is. Otherwise, with morality and, and ethics, then we argue. And then we argue. However, um, if as much as there's a lot of subjectivity, yeah, there's there's, there's some there's a there's a limit to to how how far you can you can you can bend the rules of subjectivity. You yeah. know, you, you could you could say. Um, and and that's where where you find that legality and morality actually find themselves more more often than people would like to believe. Mm. I mean, morality would would find that um, children children cannot consent to certain things, especially when 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 it comes to to sex. Mm. That's because they're children. Mm. And in fact, for for a long for a long time, our interpretation of of rape in South Africa mm. was 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 not de- developed to to the extent that it is now, mm. because. It was just one of those things where morally we knew, man, this is, this is not the right thing. Mm. And, th- and you could say thankfully or, or maybe serendipitously, there was a case where we where forced us to, to develop our law to an extent where we, we codify mm. what rape is as it affects children or it affects to, mm. to any person. Mm. So sometimes what you know is how... Mm. Um, it might not be codified, mm-hmm. but there is a there is a nexus that needs legality often, mm-hmm. and that puts subjectivity a little. I mean, I, we're talking about this, and I don't want us to spend more time because I I found your answer very insightful. Uh, you know, I'm sure you know the story of my picture with a gun elsewhere in Africa, and there is no law that says it is wrong to take a picture with a gun. Um, and lots of people, there were people who were touched by it. Of course, some are just detractors who are looking for, but I, I, I couldn't understand. It's like, have I committed sin? Is it unethical? Is it immoral? Is it illegal? And for me, it was like, no, 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 no. I was like, so what's your problem? But it's the subjectivity. People impose their value system onto me. Some of who have guns in their houses. <laughs> you know, and some of them go around with them. They just don't show them. Sure. Um, meantime, I don't even own a gun, but I'm in a country where if you own a farm, you got to learn how to shoot. And so you, if you're going to go out in the farm, whether day or night, anything can happen. You could be ready. So, so it was like, what's immoral, ethical, unethical? Suddenly, a fool's coming. Where does this come from? Yeah, that's the. But I mean, you. I think you were a victim of, of of nuances and how people use the power of perception. Yeah. Because if 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 a lot of people raise raise a lot of noise about the same particular thing, it's regardless whether the same people come from the same room. Yeah. But if a lot of people raise the same noise about the particular issue, they create that issue from nothing into something. And I think you were a victim of that. That 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 picture it was no longer. It was. It became irrelevant whether or not you were breaking a law or, or you were being immoral of that picture. It was. It became important because there was a narrative that you were breaking by carrying that picture. <laughs> All right. Like, let's move forward here. So, some people might argue that Marxism, Leninism, and religious beliefs cannot can be contradictory. So you cannot actually, or you cannot be. Um, a, a Marxist Leninist who promotes who is also a believer in God because the idea is that Marxism Leninism promotes atheism and a rejection of religion and you seem to be 
holding those two together. Mm -hmm. how, how does that how does that work? Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, this the, this whole thing is very subjective. Yeah. And um, the reason why you are able to hold one together is because when you have two 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 belief systems yeah. that are running concurrently such as Marxism and such as the belief that there's a higher power, mm. does not mean that these concurrent three belief systems have to be in contradiction. Marxism teaches you to be analytical of society. Mm -hmm. To say that um, we, we have put people into, into political authority, mm. we have created expectations, they have created and they have, they have even um, um, raised the bar of, of the expectations we had on them. Mm -hmm. But the felt reality, materialists, yeah. the felt reality is that we are poorer, we are more unemployed, we are, we don't have a healthcare system, we, 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 we are in the lowest experience of reality mm -hmm. than we ever thought would be at this time. That's what an analytical lens gives you. We, we are able to look at the socioeconomic factors that affect our daily experience. Mm. And that's how you balance the need for, for, more, mor for more moral for more equitable society with the lived material dialectic experiences of society and that's where you get the balance. Hmm. Third point, but in your academic research, have you come across any connections or intersections between Marxist Leninist theories and religious principles that have influenced your work? Absolutely. No. Mm -hmm. Um the the, the the idea of law remember that when universities started, most universities started as seminars, mm -hmm. including Including the university that I kind of correct you and go to be uh, <laughs> oh, it's not that's not a problem in saying oh, okay. we should tell them that she's from Stelis. Yeah. Uh, and of course I'm I'm at Coffee MM, um, you know, a coffee shop that's owned by uh, one of the graduates of Stellenbosch University and Maybe that's why it's doing so well, eh? <laughs> I mean no, I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything except the fact that I'm spending the day at Stellenbosch at Coffee M M. It's doing very well. If you want to have coffee, you can come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, many universities started as seminars. Many universities started with this idea that let us study God, let us study human behavior, let us study ethics, etc., etc. Mm. So, so as a... that's interesting. You are not saying they started with let us study philosophy. Um, because I I keep thinking philosophy, mathematics, ethics, da da da, da were sort of intertwined. Uh, when the philosophers in Greece were were hanging out and you know theorizing and so on and so forth, but you know I haven't studied the history of all that. But, but here's the thing: uh. um, philosophy does find its place. But to go, but to, to backtrack on nomism, uh. the 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 rule book that is, is promoted by by, by theological studies at this the Ten Command, thou shall not do this, thou shall not do that. That gives you a guide of human behavior, human conduct, and, and interaction. And from and from just looking at that rule book, mm. you can see a synergy in how modern societies have developed their goals. Mm -hmm. Mur murder is still murder, killing, yeah. stealing, lying, yeah. cheating, you know, those kind of it things. It comes from there. You, you, you can still say, mm, okay, yeah. you can still chase it back. Yeah. So, so philosophy mm. comes in where you say, okay, what is, what is, what is height? What, what is, what is purpose? What is this higher being? Mm. Um, there's this is great philosopher, um, Saint Anselm. This is, I'm, I'm, mis, I'm paraphrasing for those mm -hmm. that are avid uh, philosophers. I'm paraphrasing that the highest, perf uh, the highest example of perfection that um, one can find is the idea that there is the highest form of perfection, okay. which is God. Like in the pursuit of looking for the highest form of perfection, mm -hmm. then you, then you accept the idea that the what is this? The highest form of perfection must be. The idea that there is a god mm -hmm. so that that's just as, 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 as a base foundation in this icon does it exist does it not exist etc mm -hmm. and if one was to exist then it must exist perfectly mm -hmm. and if there is one that exists perfectly mm -hmm. then that example of perfection is that why so that's where philosophy comes in we we, we start ask, asking questions about what what is the purpose of this what is the purpose of life what is the purpose of living what is wrongfulness and what is the idea of sin mm -hmm. And yeah, perhaps maybe we must have another talk about what is the idea of sin and that can be mm. that. Okay. But 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 in your in your research you found where where these two ideas come come together. The what what questions are you engaging with that 
do they bring the two together, the idea of God and Marxist lenders? No. They, they, there's, there's limitations in which, there's limitations to, to how far you can stretch the link that binds them. Mm. The, 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 the link that, that, I, that I just um, referred to, the link of, 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 the, of the commandments, mm. this just, just gives you a moral and ethical um, base of understanding. Mm. It also gives you a point to which you, you see how laws point to a sort of common ground or okay. common source to the tent but to say in the in the practice of, of of what is right and how people should live and how society should share in its wealth and how people should mm. um i'm not saying that there the shouldn't be capitalism i'm saying that there should be a mixed society where some people are not relegated to abject poverty mm -hmm. that if there are resources that can be shared that allow for others to share in a common wealth then let it be so that's where the you could one could say but that's just general morality mm. um in its general this it does have a source or, or base root to um a religious foundation so i think that there's it's a it's a tentative and it's very nuanced mm. but you can always like trace it down mm. to where did this thinking where did this this so does line of from? thinking where does it come from mm. Mm. well th thank you for sharing your perspective I, I want us to draw towards the end and so i, w I want to ask if there's any message i mean there's so many people who call themselves Marxist Leninists. And sometimes it's such a sort of a badge of honor to young people uh, when they argue to say, I'm a Marxist, I'm a Leninist, or I'm a Marxist Leninist. Is there any message that you'd like to convey regarding the compatibility of Marxism, Leninism, and personal religious beliefs? Um, here's the thing. Personal religious beliefs is personal. Okay. And and for that basis, you should always try to delineate, delineate between what is personal to you and how do you and, and and what is practical and necessary for society mm. for the development of society. Because at at the point of departure is that as as we do research because we want to create a better society, mm. we have these 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 discourse these discussions mm. Mm. on a public platform because we, we want to inspire someone out there mm. to think better and 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 analyze the the way of living and say maybe there could be a better way that I'm living. Mm. And if there is such a way, how can I be part of creating a better society? Okay. And um, putting, we, we have different perspective, perspectives of, of, of like our personal faith. Um, mm. I remember I spoke, to, I spoke to you at some point when you first interacted about prayer. Mm. And then I said to you um, that I have been going to mosque to pray. And yes. <laughs> And um, you also said you went to shows. Okay. And um, uh, it's because the when it when it comes to religion, mm. it's a very subjective, very personal, and there is no there is no specific route in which one can um, judge or have a do not or do to mm. regarding how people practice their approach to understanding who God is. Mm. Hence, I want to relegate that into the personal realm. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the practice of how we live our lives, do not do not overextend what what is personal to you to what how people should live. I mean mm -hmm. a lot of religious groups have, have a lot of rules on how men and women should interact, mm -hmm. how, how how men sh should operate their businesses and women should operate the domestic domestic meaning home, domestic mm -hmm. affairs etc. Raise children, be pregnant and be barefoot. Mm -hmm. Don't 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 blur the lines too allow religion to give you a moral compass but remember that we live in a diverse society where people come with a lot of aspects a lot of diverse backgrounds but we must always hold the hold the people that we put in society mm. accountable to giving us to delivering on the expectations that we imposed on them and they have also um, created onto us so as a marxist leninist that would be your view if you're a priest preach your message whatever don't impose on how people live when they go home absolutely Wow. Well, mm. so which means the, uh, this idea of excommunicating people or whatever, just leave it. Just if someone is a preacher, it doesn't matter what they did. Let them come steal and preach because that's their personal life and that's the space of God. Not really. Or what? Here's the thing. We are human and mm. it's very difficult at times to separate how you, how you operate in your personal life than to um, 
but then in anything else, I'm, I'll make an example. Uh, yeah. uh, a, a very important a person I regard and look up to was asked the question: um, When, when, when you consider a judge, how would you want this judge? Mm. What, what, what are, what are the characteristics that that you think are important that a judge should have? And um, in this way, I'm answering your question about the pastor mm. going home. Then he said, uh, one of the very important things is that the person must know that they are biased. Uh -huh. The person must, must, must be able to confront their own personal biases mm. and say that I, I, I hold a subjective view on this position. Mm. That when this matter is before me, whether it is it is crime, it is, it is it's private law, whatever, mm. when this matter is before me, I have a subjective bias. And if you're able to confront your subjective bias, you then open your mind and say, now that I'm, I know how I would look at this matter, mm. what are, what's the meat and bone? What are, what are the issues that I should now look at this um, in fixing this objectively? Mm. And, and that, I would say, would extend into every platform. Oh. That, that um, if, as a, a minister was mm. to do their work, how they interact in ordinary society cannot be separated from who they are. Mm. I mean, if, 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 if you always have a positive outlook on life, even when something looks bad because of your outlook, it kind of impacts on your perception. Mm. Uh, be aware of your biases. Mm. Being aware of your biases go, extends to, to um, what, uh, there was a term that was unconscious biases. Oh, yeah. You saw it trending and over some time. Yeah. Be, be conscious of your biases. A lot of yeah. people are biased. It seems to me, though, it's good advice for any leader. Because, yeah, I think I think because we make a lot of decisions mm -hmm. about whether people are wrong or right and being conscious of your own biases. It would be, it's, 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 it's actually, it seems to me very important that you should always remind yourself. Kopana, thank you so much for talking to me. You're always so interesting. <laughs> I mean, I think there's so much more to talk about, but no. I suspect some of it we can't talk about it on the screen. So we'll, we'll talk about it when we have our lunch. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been great. Um, I'm sure we'll see Kopano somewhere, somehow, as he rises in his academic journey. And I'm sure many Marxist Leninists will respond to this. I can imagine many who I know who might have a different view, who might want to critique, write that in your comments and let's engage. And who knows, maybe one day I can host all of you and we can have a broader conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember to live your life authentically because that's the only way you can do you. All the best and I'll see you tomorrow.